DXH2. An 8K crop sensor camera under $2,000? Let's check it out. So this is Fuji's take on a hybrid camera in a pretty small package. As with most of Fuji's products, they're built very solid. This is this feels like a workhorse. I feel like I'd be able to take this anywhere. It's gonna last me forever. So let's talk about the sensor. As I said in the intro, this is an APS-C crop sensor. It boasts a 40.2 megapixel X-Trans CMOS 5HR sensor. The X-H2 and the X-T5 are two of very few cameras that pack that much punch into an APS-C sensor. As for video, so this camera can do 8K30 in 10-bit color depth. It also does something that I really like where you can oversample 4K, which basically means you can use the entire 8K sensor, sample it down to 4K, which is generally gonna leave you with less noise and a bit of a crisper, sharper image that just looks really nice. You can do ProRes, you can do up to 422HQ. You can also do RAW over HDMI. It has that full-size HDMI port. So this being a hybrid camera, we talked about its video capabilities. Now let's go into the photo capabilities. This camera is a beast in the photo department as well. You can do 20 FPS e-shutter, 15 FPS mechanical shutter, and the shutter sounds awesome. One of the things that I genuinely do take into account when I talk about a camera is what it sounds like. I am a huge sucker for a cool sounding camera. And let me tell you, this camera does not disappoint in that department. This shutter is so smooth and silky and creamy and just, let me, let me, let me give you a listen. This is something that has no bearing on the performance of the camera, the capabilities, anything like that. This is purely cosmetic, but something that's so important to me for no good reason. The X-H2, it might be my favorite. Fuji just has great shutter sounds. Take a listen. It, it, just, it just sounds right. It just, it just sounds great. Luckily, this is a camera that is awesome from the get-go and having an awesome shutter sound just puts it even higher in my opinion. This is a camera that when I come across it, there's not a whole lot of bad stuff I can say about it. There are things that I would prefer be different, but it's really, it kind of comes down to your individual preference. There are a few things that they do differently on the hybrid series, whereas opposed to uh, the XT series like T3, T4, T5 that are a lot different. Uh, you know, you don't get all the dials on the top. So moving on to autofocus. I'm gonna say it up front, I've never been a big fan of subject detection, face tracking, that kind of stuff in cameras just because it's never been reliable for me. So it's not something that I've tested extensively on this camera. I tend to have a center weighted AF point where I will, uh, center whatever my subject is, focus, and then reframe my shot, just because it's hard. It's hard for the camera to know what subject you're trying to focus on, especially when it's a very complicated or complex subject. For instance, with this camera, I was trying to shoot through some trees onto a concrete wall with graffiti. Very complex subject that, you know, the camera's gonna think you're trying to focus on the trees. It is 100% understandable, but also something that I I just I just tend to use the center weighted or manual focus. So it's not something that I've tested out extensively, but I will say uh, Fuji's autofocus is really good. It it hits the mark, you know, does what you need it to do. But uh, I, I would say it still probably falls behind the likes of Canon and Sony. It's just it, it's very good, but it's not quite to that level yet. So like I said, it has subject detection autofocus. It also has a seven stop, five axis uh, internal body stabilization, which in my experience so far has been really good. It does suffer from the same drawbacks as a lot of in-body stabilization, where anytime you move and are trying to like slowly pan 
or do some kind of slow movement, it tends to keep everything very still until you kind of get to a certain point where it'll just jump. That's something that you see with most cameras, so I can't really dig on the X-H2 for this, but it is something that it suffers from just like many other cameras. That's the only drawback that I've seen with the in-body stabilization. I would say it holds up pretty well to everybody else. So now we're gonna get into some of the claims that Fuji has made about this camera. The first is low light power. That's what it says on the website. Now, inherently, because it's a crop sensor, it's gonna be harder to uh, have low light performance than a full frame sensor just because you have that much less light that you can absorb. But from my experience, it's actually pretty good. I think I saw a comparison between the X-H2 and like an R5 or R6, and it held up very considerably. It was almost better in some circumstances. So I would say the low light performance of this is at very least will meet your standard. Of course, once you start to get to those ridiculous ISOs, the noise level will get pretty bad. But up to a point, the noise level is very decent. It's very usable, very workable, especially with today's tools on noise removal. So the lowest ISO you can go is 125, and the highest shutter speed you can go is 1 180,000th of a second. This camera has something that's really cool called a pixel shift multi-shot, which isn't something I had ever heard before I looked up this camera, which using the in-body stabilization ability to shift the sensor, like physically move the sensor around, you get 160 megapixel image just from the sensor shifting, taking a picture, and doing that 20 times, uh, resulting in a huge image uh, and something that you actually have to download a program to be able to combine all those images. It doesn't do it in the camera, but using that, you can take an already amazing resolution and make it that much bigger. So you go from 40.2 megapixels to 160 megapixels. It does have MF assist, which is kind of cool. Uh, you have the ability on the back, there's a couple screws and a port where you can plug in a cooling fan, uh, especially when you're recording video or doing something on a hot day. You're able to use a battery grip, a file transmitter grip, and actually connect a bunch of cameras. Uh, it does have F-Log, it has a 1.62 million dot 3 inch LCD screen and a 0.8x magnification 5.76 million dot EVF. So now we get to one of my favorite parts about Fuji's cameras, the film simulation modes. Now every Fuji camera has them, the X-H2 isn't necessarily unique in this, but it's something that's worth mentioning because it, it it's one of my favorite things about a Fuji camera. It's why in my opinion, people get it. In a nutshell, what Fuji did was take all of their different film stocks and create different color profiles, different looks, to where the pictures you take look like they were taken on that film. Honestly, I'm sold. It's one of the reasons that I love Fuji so much. When you think of Canon, when you think of Sony, when you think of Nikon, you generally think of crisp, clear, true to color images. If they're not gonna have a whole lot of character to them. They're just going to be what you see is what you get. And a lot of times that's what you want, especially if you are a professional photographer, if you're doing event, wedding, portrait photography, you want your cameras to portray a lifelike image, something that's very true to what you see. Now, sometimes you want something like what Fuji does in you want something that's going to give you character. You want some kind of uniqueness and something different to the photo. And that's one thing that Fuji does very well. I love their film stocks because you can basically choose what you want your vibe of your photos to be. One of my favorite film stocks, the one that I use probably the most over this weekend was the Nostalgic because it just gives you a super warm, like it says, nostalgic feel to all your photos. It's one of the ones that I've used basically the whole weekend and it just it just feels good. A lot of times honestly, you don't even really need to edit it that much. It's something that it's pretty easy to go straight from camera to 
you know, if you want to post it somewhere or do something like that, it's knocks it out of the park. So getting into the photo modes, uh, I like what Fuji does on the X-H2 where you get uh, your program auto, you get your shutter, uh, priority aperture, priority manual, and then you get seven different custom. Now it does have 10 assignable dials. All along the back and the top, you get assignable dials and buttons that you can customize however you feel uh, is best logistically for you. Moving on to IO, you get a full-size HDMI port, USB 3.2 Type-C port, 3.5 millimeter headphone TRS, 3.5 millimeter microphone TRS, a PC sync port, 2.5 millimeter remote, and then on top of that, you have Bluetooth and Wi-Fi connectivity. One of the great things about this camera is there's no record limit. You have contrast and phase detection AF, which I think is pretty standard nowadays. Uh, and all of that coming in at under $2,000. I think technically retail price is $19.99, uh, but I was able to find it for $18.99 and lower. So for everything that you get with this camera, it is a powerhouse with a very low price. So now my review of it. When I took this out, this is a camera that there's a little bit of a learning curve if you're like me and you've only ever touched Canon and Sony in your life. And it's a little different than say the XT series like T4, T5, uh, where you kind of have all the dials all accessible to you. Uh, in reality, you kind of only have a couple different dials that you can play with. Everything else is located in the menu. I would say it's one of those things you kind of have to get used to, but once you're used to it, you can just go. The viewfinder is pretty great. The articulating screen is honestly one of my favorite things, and I am so glad it's being put in so many cameras nowadays. You also have an OLED display at the top. That is awesome. You can look down and see some of your settings and uh, at a glance kind of see what you're looking with. Another thing I love about this camera is that it has a CF Express Type B, which I hope every camera gets in the future. It's something, it's like an SD card, but it's better. It's so much faster. You can have uh, typically a lot more storage on it. They are, of course, more expensive, but to me, it's so worth it. This camera is absolutely one that I would be taking for street photography, nature photography, on a trip. Uh, anywhere where I want kind of a unique perspective, some unique color to it. I might not make it my first choice for something like an event or a corporate shoot or something that I'm getting paid for just because the likes of Canon and Sony are going to tend to have a bit more realistic, true color image that I can then manipulate from there. But honestly, I could see myself using this. Uh, the standard color profile is very good. Um, it's just, I feel like it's strengths come out of its film simulations and I'm probably not going to use the film simulations for those types of projects. The photo capabilities are amazing out of this. A 40 megapixel sensor is more than I will ever need, at least for a while. The video capabilities, I mean, 8K is wild to, to just walk around knowing that this thing can do 8K blows my mind. Something that I have not experienced personally, but I've heard about with this camera, is the rolling shutter can get pretty bad, especially around 8K, which obviously that's a drawback, but honestly, kind of understandable. You know, this camera is, uh, you could get it less than $2,000. So in that avenue, I, I can't, I, I just can't ding this camera. I love it too much. It's something it's, very affordable for what it can do. It packs a big punch. Fuji builds their cameras so well. At least they feel like it. Everything's made out of metal or hard plastic. It just feels like I can take this anywhere and it'll survive. For the price point, is it worth it? It's a zero hesitation yes. I love this camera and being the price point it is, it's a no brainer for me. I would add it to my arsenal in a heartbeat. It's something that I would take on any leisure trip. I would take it just to have fun. I mean, this is a fun camera and it lets me, if I wanna take pictures, boom. If I wanna take great video, boom. It's, it's all there in one pretty light package. This is not a heavy camera and it's just something that overall, it's solid. I love it. Would recommend, 
I give this probably an eight out of 10, if not an eight and a half. And, and that's it. That's the XH2. Thank you so very much for watching. I hope I was able to give you a good insight into the Fuji X-H2 camera, its capabilities, its performance. Feel free to leave a comment asking any questions. I'd love it if you could interact with this video so that it's recommended to other fantastic people like you. Until next time, you're wonderful, you're amazing, and I hope you find your shot. Thank you.